Hi guys, welcome to another Daily Theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, we had one requested today. We've got a full screen parallax image one page scrolling site for you today. And basically we've got a full page image here when I scroll down. It's going to be replaced with another image. When I scroll down again, different image. Scroll down again, same thing. And finally, we got a little contact form on the bottom. Really easy to do and really eye-catching thing to have on your site. So let's get started. I'm going to add a new page. I'm going to go up to new and down a page. I'm going to open mine in a new tab. We'll give it a name. I'm just going to call mine FP PLLX for full page parallax. I'm going to use the Divi Builder, funnily enough. I'm going to go ahead and build from scratch. When it asks me to put in a row, obviously, dependent on what you want to put in yours, choose whatever row it is. For my first one here, I'm going to use a single row, single column. I'm just going to plonk a call to action in there. I'm not really going to do much to it at all. I'll change that background color in a minute. I'm just going to leave it like that for the time being. Okay, well, our section, let's make it full width or full height or full screen, I should say. To do that, go into the section, the blue tab. Let's put a background in so we can see what's going on a bit better. I'm going to go to background. We've got color gradient image, which we're going to use today. Video, background pattern or background mask. I'm going to use background image today. And let's pop in an image. Great. Well, we've got that there. I want to make it full screen height or at least most of it. And this will be on all devices. So let's pop over to design. I'm going to go down to sizing. I'm going to roll down to height. I'm actually going to put 100 VH, 100 VH, viewable height. And that stretched it 100% of whatever screen we're looking at it on. Now, it's just a little bit too much for me. You've got the footer down the bottom there. But to take into account our little header that we've got up here, I'm going to back it off to maybe 90. So let's just do 90. Bit shorter. And we're pretty much going straight to our footer down the bottom right there. Great. Well, I want to make this a parallax image so that when we scroll up, it stays where it is. This is also called fixed background. They call it CSS parallax here. So if we go back down to content and background, back to our image, just below, we're going to find a little button that says use parallax effect. If I put that on, it's got true parallax, which will mean it'll move at a slightly different rate to the front. It's not what I'm going to use today. I'm going to use what they call CSS parallax here. Now, when I roll over it, that image is going to say exactly where it is, which is just what I want. Fantastic. So we've got it full screen. We've got a bit of content in there. I want to kind of make sure that this content is in the middle at all times. So I'm going to go into there. I'm just going to change that background color so we can see a bit through. Again, I'm into the call to action under the content. Always find a background there. I'm going to change that blue to a black. I'm going to click on the black field. Variegated slider is opacity. I'm going to take that down so we can see quite a lot of the image behind and still be able to read that writing. Okay. Well, to get that content right in the middle here, I'm going to use a bit of code for this today. I'm going to use display flex. Really easy. I'll pop it down below the video for anybody that wants to copy paste. So let's go into our section for this. We go over to advanced custom CSS in the main element. I'm going to say display colon and the word flex. See, as I do that, you'll see that content pops down to the middle there. And that's always going to be in the middle, which is great. Just what we want. Now display flex is great, but if you're using more than two elements here, we'll have to do something different. And I'll show you that with the next section. Very easy there. So let's just save that. Well, I think that's our first section done there. 
But while we're here, we're going to create a menu later on that scrolls to these. So to make that happen, we need to give each section its own unique ID. To do that, let's go back into our section, over to Advanced again. This time we're going to go to CSS ID in Classes. CSS ID, not Class. Make sure you put it in ID for this. I'm just going to call this Section 1, SEC1. You can call yours what you like. It wants to be unique though. And we'll use these to make our menu in a moment. Okay, well, let's just clone this section. Two little squares right there. If I roll down, there's a whole another one. So if you wanted the whole of your site to have the same image behind it, that'd be a good way to do it. Let's go into our second section there. We'll swap out the image. Background. Remember, we've already got our height set. Go over to image. Pop a different little image in there. I think I used that wizard last time. Let's use that one again. Make sure the parallax is on again. CSS, as we've copied it, it's got the same thing. It's got our display flex in there. And as you can see, it's already doing our little parallax thing there, which is fantastic. Okay, well, what I was talking about was the display flex. Let's just change our little row here. I'm going to make it a row of three. And let's just copy this a couple of times. I'll roll up. We'll drag one of them over. Doesn't matter which one. They're all identical. Pop one in there. And we'll clone it. And we'll pop it on the one in over here. That's great. That's still going to be in the middle there because we've got our display flex going on. But if I was to clone this actual row, two little squares again, green tab for the row, it's going to display them in line like that, which is not really going to work. There's not quite enough space, and that's going to be really messy on mobile. So if you want to do something like that, you can go in there, hit the advance again, go to your custom CSS, and we'll just get rid of that. I'm just going to cut it, Control X. As you can see, it returns to the normal styling there, which works perfectly. So I'm going to leave that just like that. But I don't actually want these in here, so I'm going to delete those. I think I'll change the structure of these columns a little bit too. Just click on the row again. Column structure is right here. Well, I'm going to change it to something like that. You won't see much difference. This side's just changed, but I'm not putting anything in this side at all. So we'll save that. And delete that. And we'll delete this one as well. I haven't changed the column size on that one. So we've got our little next section right there. And I'll just clone this one more time. I roll down, you won't see any difference when I do it. But if we go into that section that we just copied, little blue tab, I'm just clicking on the section there. We can swap that image out again under background. Image. I used that little alien fella last time. And for expediency, all I'm going to do is drag this one over to this side for this. I will change the actual column for that. In fact, let's just do this. I'll delete that one. Remember, we've not got our display flex on these particular ones. All I'm going to do is move this from this column to this column. And I'm going to go into the module. I'm going to clone it underneath. And to make that in the middle, we can put our display flex back again. We go back in there. Back to the advanced and custom CSS main element pop our display flex in there that'll be nicely in the middle again great and we've gotten to put our little css ids in here so advance css id in classes section three this is and we'll turn that one up here into section two Now yeah, we'll clone this one more time. Now we've got our display flex going on there. Let's put a gallery in and see what's going to happen. So I'm going to click on the new section. We'll change out the image. I used that last time. 
while we're in here, let's change out the CSS ID. Number four. Like I say, you can call your sections whatever you want, but make sure each one is unique. And let's get rid of this. Let's turn this into a full width row. Again, I'm going to click onto the column structure icon there. In a full width row, I'm going to change that for a gallery module. Rows pop down the bottom there. Choose a gallery. I'm going to put in perhaps eight images. I have a pretty consistent aspect. I think that should be eight. I'll pop those in there. We're all down. I want to display eight images. And I don't want any caption or pagination. Yeah, that works absolutely fine. And again, because we've got our display flex, it's centering that for us nicely in, in the middle there. And of course, you can add titles and things like that. Okay, and one last one for a contact form. Let's clone this one one more time. Roll on down. We'll change out the background of our new section here. Image. And I think I used that fellow before. While we're here, we'll do the CSS ID in class. Number five. Great. And we're just going to throw a contact form in here. So let's get rid of the gallery. I'll leave the structure on its own. Little rows floated down the bottom. Yeah, we'll put a little contact form in there. I'm not going to do the form. I'm sure you know how to build your forms. If not, take a look at one of our other videos. What I will do is go over to design that field color. Fields over here. I'm going to make it white. I'm going to click on the color there. Go into there. The little variegated slider again. I'm going to pull the opacity down a bit so we can see that little fella behind just a little bit. Something like that. Obviously, that's up to you. Great. Well, let's save our changes now. And exit the Visual Builder. So we've got a little five sections going on there. With our centered contact. I'll show you now how to make the menu that can skip to these sections. Let's just pop back to the top. In fact, the one I've got here should actually work because I've used the same CSS IDs. So home will be the top, about, takes us to this one. Services to our third one. Gallery, the fourth one. And contact to our little contact form. Home should take us back up the top. Great. Okay, to build this menu, we need to go down to our dashboard, down to appearance, and then down to menus. I want to create a new menu. I'll just call it images. Call yours what you want, as long as it makes sense to you. When you've done that, hit the Create Menu button on the right-hand side. It'll tell you Images has been updated. Great. Well, let's create the actual menu. We're using custom links for this today, so let's close up Pages there. Go down to Custom Links. Remember, we gave our sections those IDs of Section 1 through 5. Well, our first one is going to be Hashtag, then the CSS ID, which is Set 1. And we'll call this Home, which was the top section. Once you're happy, add it to the menu. Going to do exactly the same for section two, hashtag. Make sure you put your hashtag in front. Then the CSS ID, section two. And we'll call this about. I'll just pause this for a second and I'll add the other ones exactly the same way. So I've got my last one here, section five. Let's add it to the menu. If you're using the regular Divi primary and secondary menus, you can just go down below and assign it to that primary menu just down here by putting the check mark in there. I'm actually using custom menus for mine today that I've built with a theme builder. So I'll assign it that way. Let's save this menu now. And for the custom builder, I need to go back to our page here. I'm going to refresh this page as we've just built the menu. Once refreshed, I'm going to enable the visual builder. I'm going to roll over and hit edit header template. You can only do this with a custom header. Now we're in there, I'm going to go into my menu module. 
I'm going to select images as my menu. It should be right down the bottom. There it is. You won't see much difference because it is exactly the same as the one I had before. Once you're happy, hit save changes. We can save our changes here. And let's exit the visual builder again. Now we've got our home where we're all at the moment about services, gallery, contact, and then back to the top again with the home button. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a full screen parallax image changing site with a scrolling menu with your Divi theme. Really easy to do. We built this whole site in about 20 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.